friends, it's Sam from DIY Huntress and I am so excited because today is finally the day that I get to start my shed shop makeover. Now I know that I've been hinting at making over my workshop on my channel for a while, but the day has come. I cannot believe that it has been two and a half years since my dad and I built this shed and since I turned it into my workshop. And over the past two and a half years, I have learned so much about how to be efficient in a small space. I've also learned that I've collected way too many things over the past two and a half years and it is feeling so crowded in here. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to be tackling a ton of different projects in this space. Now I'm going to be sharing a ton more detail on how it's been working in this 12 by 12 shed space for the past two and a half years, as well as all the things that I'm going to be changing and why in a full blown shed shop makeover video on my channel in a couple of weeks. But in the meantime, there are tons of projects that I'm going to be working on in this space that are going to also have dedicated videos. So definitely make sure to subscribe to my channel if you are not yet and click that notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. To get started though, I'm going to be transforming this tool wall behind me into a DIY concrete accent wall. And yes, I'm keeping the tools, not all of them, but I'm definitely keeping the tools. I just have this really cool vision in my head of my tools hanging on this accent wall that I could also use as a backdrop for photos and for filming. And I'm really hoping that this vision that I have in my head actually comes to life in the way that I'm thinking it's gonna come to life, but I guess we'll find out at the end of this video. I am so excited, but like also so nervous to do this project, but luckily I have all of you cheering me on and I am so grateful for that. So with that being said, let's get started. <laughs> As much as I've loved my little or big tool wall for the past couple of years, it has been feeling a little cluttered in here recently and I think it's just time for a change. Okay friends, here we go. This is nuts. I've honestly had a tool wall just like this one since I started my brand like way back in 2012 when I only had a blog. So it does feel a little strange that I am taking down these tools and starting fresh with a brand new concept. But one of the themes of this whole entire Shed Shop makeover, and you'll see this throughout all of the videos that will be on my channel eventually, is just paring down and making this a much more efficient space to not only build, but to also document my projects. So with paring down being the theme, I figured it would be best to start with this tool wall because there are tons of tools that I don't use on a regular basis, and I will be donating these to a local high school's drama club because I do teach them how to build sets a couple of days a week after my full-time job. And if you were someone who loved theater in high school like me, then you'll know that those budgets are super tight and they can't always afford tools for the crew. So I'd rather just donate these tools to students who are gonna love them. But after kind of sorting through my tools and keeping what I needed, it was then time to kind of maneuver everything around my shop so that I could have access to that back wall. <laughs> Check it out. Pretty gross. Well, you know what I'm doing when I move these out of the way. I'm so happy these things are on wheels, but also I was so nervous to see what was literally and figuratively living behind these tool benches. Luckily, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but clearly I'm gonna have to do a much better job with dust collection in this little space, but that's something that we will tackle together later. Now, something that I didn't mention is I had to do a decent amount of prep work to that back wall before even starting this entire process, but I'm gonna tackle that a lot more in the full shed shop makeover video. Really, all that was is just making sure that this top part of the wall was flush with the bottom part. And I also finally decided to insulate the eaves of the shop as well. And don't you worry, the ceiling is next, but we can talk about insulation together in a different video. In terms of talking about this concrete accent wall though, one thing I do wanna mention that I'm doing here is I had to add some blocking in between the studs of my workshop because when we built this workshop, the plans did not have the studs on 16 inches on center. And because of that, I needed to add some extra support in order to hang some cement board. One other thing I had to do to prep the studs in this wall for the cement board was to also make sure that they were completely flush and this meant removing anything that was still stuck in the studs like leftover stripped screws from the pegboard. Luckily I got my hands on a Dremel with a metal cutting wheel this year for Home Depot's prospective program and that worked perfectly. And once that was done it was time to call in the big guns to help with the cement board. Hey. I'm not getting paid enough for this. <laughs> Oh, actually, never mind. I found some quarters. You're good. It's my salary for the week. Just a couple quarters? Yep. No pizza this time? Well, 20 pies. 20 pies? <laughs> so we'll lift it together, and then I basically need you to just like push it into place while I drill it in. Sound good? You can just lift it by yourself. Okay, so first of all, my brother is the best. And secondly, I wanted to use cement board for this project instead of anything else because with all of the vibrations of the tools, I was kind of worried that anything else that I may have applied cement to for this accent wall would not adhere well. I've never done a cement wall before 
And this is the way that you would do it if you were to be doing a fireplace surround, which I felt like was the sturdiest way. So that is why I'm using cement board. If you were to do an accent wall like this at home, I don't know if you would have to remove the drywall or if you could just install cement board over your drywall. If anybody knows this, please leave me a comment below. But either way, the cement board was super easy to install and easy to trim. Name that thing Martin. Martin? Why? Because it's squirty's easy. <laughs> did you really? Did you really? You bet. I, we're keeping that one in the edit. <laughs> so, yes, to further my point from earlier, in the words of my brother, this stuff was awesome because it scores easy. I was able to use a cement board knife to just trim the pieces that I needed when hanging. And then once that was done, I kind of snapped that piece off. And then I was able to screw the cement board into the studs with the help of my brother because these things were like kind of heavy. Now, just a side note, as always, you can find the full list of materials and tools that I use for this project on my website by clicking on the link below this video. However, I do want to note that these boards do come in quarter inch and half inch thickness. And I did decide to go with the half inch thick boards because I just wanted this thing to be super rigid, probably overkill for a cement accent wall, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Thanks for your help. Where's my pizza? <laughs> I will order pizza when we're done. Cool. Sound good? Thank you. Okay. You're a way better helper than the dogs. So after using and abusing my brother for his heavy lifting skills, I was then able to just kind of like fill in all of the little gaps of places that I needed to with any of the leftover cement board. And once that was done, I was then able to tape all of the seams of the cement board using a cement board specific tape. Overall, I want to say I paid about $150 to be able to do this accent wall. I know you guys, it seems like overkill for a workshop, but I really have been wanting to do a cement accent wall for the longest time and as a renter I obviously can't do this in my own home so to be able to do this in my workshop is awesome. In terms of the product that I used for all of the cement in this entire project I did use Ardex Feather Finish Cement. It does go on pretty lightly. In fact it did take me a little bit to kind of figure out what consistency worked best. Probably honestly the consistency of frosting is what I would recommend which sounds so weird to say when you're talking about cement But the reality is is that I ended up putting on I think a little bit too much on these seams, which was fine It just meant that I ran out of cement faster than I was hoping to but installation was super easy I used a cement trowel and added the cement to all of the seams making sure to feather out all of the edges of the seams to blend into the cement board and once I was done with that, I then allowed the entire wall to dry overnight before coming back the next day to work on the rest of the accent wall. One thing that I worried about overnight while thinking about this wall, because that's naturally what you do at night is think about walls, right? Was I was super worried that the consistency of the cement wouldn't be what I liked or wanted, but I was totally wrong. And once I was happy with how everything was drying, I then taped off all of the areas of my shop that I did not want to get cement on before starting on the full wall. This time though, I did mix the cement into a bigger batch in a bucket by following the instructions on the back of the package. And I made sure to just mix enough to be able to work with in small increments of time so that it didn't dry out while I was using it. Again, I definitely think that the first couple of batches that I mixed were way too thick and that resulted in a decent amount of waste for the cement, but you live and you learn. Either way, the cement was just as easy to apply as it was when I did it for the seams. I just used a cement trowel and spread it out and I worked from one side of the wall and then went over to the other side of the wall. I did run into a little bit of a snag when it cured later. Uh, basically, I guess my best advice here would be just be super cognizant of how much water you're adding to your batch as you work because if you add different amounts of water to each batch, they may dry in different colors and this is a problem that I had to fix later. But other than me just trying to figure out the consistency thing throughout this project, in terms of actually applying the cement to the wall, I just like went ahead and did it. I made it as super organic as I could, just applying it in random patterns, allowing there to be some texture. I didn't want this to look perfect. I wanted to have this really cool industrial look because you guys know how much I love the industrial look. And honestly, it worked out great. And cue my traditional premature happy dance because the next day I realized I ran into a snap. It is drying two different colors. I'm really bummed about it. I know why this is happening. I 
I don't think, I know. I, it's because I wasn't, I wasn't perfect when I mixed the ratio of cement to water. So parts of this are drying like this dark gray color, other parts are drying like this light gray. And normally I wouldn't mind, but half of this wall is dark gray and the other half is light gray. I am going to try something. I don't know if it's gonna work. I'm going to take my orbital sander and 80 grit sandpaper and I'm going to sand this all down or at least like sand or try to feather these colors first and see if I could blend some of the coloring in the cement. If that doesn't work then I'm going to actually just sand the entire wall. So like this isn't like real cement. Sorry I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. You're just like not really real cement. So because of that I have a feeling that regular sandpaper is just going to work out perfectly for this. Kind of sucks because I'm going to lose some of the cool texturing but maybe it'll look more like polished concrete instead of stucco that's the hope so wish me luck i've obviously never done this before i think it's gonna work yeah you get the gist so at first i thought i could just sand down some small sections and then i realized nope i gotta sand down the whole entire wall so that is exactly what i did i sanded the whole wall with 80 grit sandpaper and then i actually stole my mom's mop because i'm really great at stealing her household items sorry mom um and i mopped my wall to remove all of the excess dust and then i allowed the wall to dry overnight but once the wall had dried, the last step in this process was to just hide all of the raw seams of the cement board with some two by fours and reframe that wall to prep for ceiling insulation at a later point in time and I was done. I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am about this change of scenery in my shed shop. I have been wanting to do a cement accent wall for the longest time and the fact that I now get to do it in my happy place makes me so, so stoked. This wall is not only going to function as a tool wall at some point, but will also be a backdrop for some projects, especially when the projects are too big to bring to my apartment to stage. And I feel like that's going to make things so much easier for me in the future. The next few months are going to be a wild ride here on the channel as I continue to hunt for more projects to complete and share with you guys, both in this space and also outside of this space. So if you are interested in sticking around for everything that I have in store, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to say that I am so excited for all the projects that are coming up in the next few weeks is a complete understatement. But until then, friends, as always, thank you so much for being here, for spending your time with me, and for supporting everything I do. I would not have my little shed shop or this amazing business without all of your support. I will definitely be seeing you all with a project sooner than you think. So until then, friends, happy DIYing.